All right, welcome to the October 8th, 2024 East Cloud Asian Python Maintainers Meeting. A couple of things to talk about, Release 101, uh, move to OWF, and some PRs that have come up lately, in particular Daniel's yesterday. So we want to talk about a few of those. Sounds like we had a similar one as well um, recently discovered. So um, that'll be a good topic if we have time or what we have. Um, reminder, this is probably our last, last LF decentralized trust meeting, um, before we move to OWF. So the, uh, the Linux foundation antitrust policy will, is in effect as it will be when we move to OWF and no doubt there will be a new code of conduct, but for this meeting, the LFDT code of conduct is in effect. So keep those two things in mind. Um, New Zoom links for this meeting in Acapug when we move to OWF. So I hope to have the Acapug meeting set up for um, in OWF next week. So heads up for that. Um, <clears throat> any announcements? Um, <clears throat> I will throw out one. We created a uh, did TDW information site. Isn't that exciting? So if I go to the chat, hang on. If you go to that URL, you will see a uh, new information site about did TDW. And again, that will keep us moving forward and getting that going. Big thing. Um, for me right now, um, Patrick's making lots of progress on a web server um, for hosting did webs and did TDW and would like to keep us moving, making progress on moving that into um, ActPy. Any other announcements from anyone? Cool. Release 101, um, ready? What do we think? Has anyone had any chance to do anything with it? Um, there's not a ton in there, and we're running all the tests on it, so I don't see why it wouldn't be ready. But, but yeah, yeah. All, all the tests I used to run when we had a release prepared, JB yeah. basically moved all of those into the refund oh, now, I so see. they're all happening automatically. Um, <laughs> so so I, okay. I I am also fairly confident that one okay. one oh one is probably fine. Okay. Okay. All right, I will get that done today. We'll get that out. Um, the latest on the move to OWF, I think we've sorted out that there's no need for a backport. Um, as I understand it, and Jamie checked me on this, um, Rye will give us a token for OWF that will allow publishing to Hyperledger. Um, we have the branches in place so that the PyPy uh, release can go. I I uh, blanked on that realization. I was thinking, sitting there thinking the OWF fork is only going to have the Akapai agent directory. But of course, we've got a, a branch um, already created for 11 and 12, which does not, is called Aries Cloud Agent. So that, of course, is fine. So PyPy can be published. So there might be um, some GitHub action work to be done. Um, but other than that, the artifacts can be published in all the normal places. Yeah, it will definitely be a bit interesting if we when we do a patch release. Mm -hmm. but, but we should have be able to do it. <laughs> yeah, and we'll do an RC. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, good. Okay. Um, I noticed like the depend bots were really benign this week, um, all on the pipeline area, none on the code. So that's good. I think we're up to date on all of the code ones. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay. So um, um, yeah. immediately after 101 goes out, um, we'll get that release done and then um, 
Jamie, you and I and Rye will coordinate to um, make sure we're uh, we're coordinating on that. And you're yeah. in the um, OWF Discord, are you? Yeah. Good. I want to make sure there's a there's a channel that we were talking about it and you weren't on it for some reason and. I don't know if you're invited, you're in it yet or not. I couldn't invite you at the time. Yeah, you sent me one link that didn't work for some reason. Okay. Um, yeah, there's the there's two tokens. There's the SNCC token that I think has to be. Uh, I think it uses the repo name. Okay. I'm not super sure about that token because I don't use it that often, but. There's also the Sonar Cloud token, and that one needs to be updated with the new app repo name. Okay. Um, so I don't know who's going to do that. I'm not Rye, sure. Rye would be the one to do that, I'm sure. Okay. So, yeah, just making sure that he's in, you know, he's in sync. And he's got to do the move anyway. I'm pretty sure he's the one that has the control to do the actual repo moves. So there you go. Should be pretty easy as long as somebody has uh, organization access to do that. Yeah, exactly. Um, let's jump to PRs and then we can jump to issues. So these are the two. Um, I'm pretty sure there's no overlap between ours. Um, I would like to make mine merge first when we get there because you know how to fix conflicts and I don't. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. So um, we'll do it in order that way. Um, I assume there's nothing else we want to merge before. Um, looks like this would be the only one and we don't want to move anything else before um, before the move, right? So 101? Yeah, I've just been waiting. I don't, there's not much to go in right now anyway, okay. but figure to do the move and then rebase and then, because yeah, with this big PR, that yeah, change, I mean, like there's going to be merge conflicts because yeah. it changes files and names and everything, well, it changes directory names and everything. So. Yeah. This is why it's very important. I don't have any open PRs when this move happens. So, <laughs> yeah, I'd rather just get that done and then yeah, uh, rebase the open PRs than the other way around. Perfect. Okay, good. Okay. Then over to issues. Um, Daniel, you want to talk through this one a little bit? Uh, yeah. Um, so I've got uh, something I'm working on uh, to enable being able to issue JSON LD credentials using DidIndy basically is the ultimate goal. Yeah. And I was, I, you know, jotted something down real fast to enable publishing like the did doc content uh, to enable that JSON LD credential issuance with the DidIndy. Yeah. yeah. Um, as well as the attrib. And I was looking at it and I was like, oh, shoot, I've got to worry about endorsement and stuff for this. And then I, I thought about it for a while and I was like, wait a second, do I really have to do endorsement for for updating did doc content and, and trips? Like why would the endorser need to be involved if I'm updating stuff about a name that they've already previously endorsed? And I went and checked the auth rules and sure enough, uh, NIM transaction, NIM update transactions uh, in the default auth rules, at least for an indie network, uh, don't require endorsement. They just need to be signed by the owner of the NIM. Yeah. Um, same is true for uh, trip transactions. Um, and then uh, I was more focused on on the NIM side of things, but it's also true for revocation res registry entries. Um, if you have so, the RevRegDef, as long as you had that endorsed and stuff, then the entries can be published freely without endorsement. So we ran into this issue with the sovereign network is much tighter with its auth rules. The auth rules were set. I don't know when the network was established. They haven't been changed in, in, in a very long time, but they are much more restrictive. Mm -hmm. We got into a, the reason, well, I know that 
Um, I'm pretty sure that um, you can't use the the Akapai without an endorser on Sovereign without um, without having the auth rule without having without being an endorser because of the reverse problem of what you're talking about, which is it doesn't sign a rev reg entry and you need it to. So um, it's, I would say it, it needs to be configurable by the network, but I don't yeah. know. Yeah. And that, that's kind of what I'm thinking as well. Um, like obviously the auth rules are configurable across networks. Like not all of them are going to behave exactly the same way. Yeah. I question the value of gatekeeping some of these transactions still on, on those sorts of networks, but <laughs> I um, agree. that question aside, um, having the endorser logic, like actually check what the auth rules are and use that to determine if, a, if an endorsement is necessary for a given transaction. Um, like the auth rules aren't going to change, change frequently. So we could, yeah. you know, retrieve that cache it for, a long time and we should be fine um so what yeah, what that... do you think of the idea of just having a list uh, a an enumerated list and and you just read the auth rule set the json and go um i'm not sure i understand what you mean yet um, um so instead of dynamically actually reading the auth rules for a ledger hmm. we we have the uh, JSON structure that is the default auth rules, but you can change them for a different ledger. Hmm. So that we don't have to read the rules and cache them and worry about all that. We just assume that you're gonna figure it out before you use a network and hard code them to be correct on, on basically the idea that they're not likely to change. Right. And if um, they do change, you're gonna get notified. I don't have any moral issues with that i guess um the only thing I'm just I, trying to think I, would it would it be easier to code if we did it that way yeah that's a fair question uh probably would be we do have like this this bootstrapping phase with a network where we need to retrieve like the uh the what are they called the pool transactions to mm -hmm. identify like each of the nodes in yeah. the network yeah um, because they that can change over time and the Genesis yeah. transactions aren't a good reflection of that. So like yeah. we already have this pattern of retrieving okay. some information from the network. So maybe we can just hook into that and, okay. and keep it in that kind of a region of the code. But I, I haven't looked in detail at that yet. So it, it that might not be as simple as I made it out to be. Okay. Um, well, why don't you keep, are, are you going to be looking at this? Uh, it's yes, uh, probably. Um, I'm I'm looking at endorser stuff in general, um, just trying to improve the situation. Okay. And I think requiring endorsement only when endorsement is required will be a significant help in general um, mm -hmm. in that process, just to like kind of limit the scope of how much it impacts everything. Um, yeah. So yeah, I will, I, I will probably look at this. Yeah. I mean, the alternative is you just endorse everything to be simpler. And again, comes back to what's easy to code versus what matters. Now, it depends how much it's delaying things. Um, but, you know, if you don't have to mess up, mess into getting off rules and so on, and you just say, oh, I have an endorser, I'll get them to sign everything because it doesn't hurt. Yeah. Uh, you, have I think... to sign, you, you pretty much have to have some endorsement, endorsing right. signing. So that's just a given. So making it simple to just say, okay, get an endorsement, even if you don't need it, might also be the simplest thing. Yeah, I, I think the, the real problem with the endorsement code just in general is um, I think it's just, there's too much copy pasted code in like multiple places in, in the code base. So we have like all this logic to check whether an endorser is present, what our role is, and then to yeah. use that information to like, add flags onto the ledger uh, functions that we call in order to generate the transaction or, or submit it. Uh, like, and all of this is copy pasted at yeah. every location where uh, a, a transaction is, is being Got submitted. Um, 
so I, I think part of my desire to reduce the impact of endorsement is heavily influenced by just how ugly all that is right now. Okay. Um, but yeah, I, I, we, if we're going to have it be configurable per network, um, I, I think that code doesn't go away, obviously. I, I think it just needs to be better. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Another Okay. thing that I've been thinking about is that, uh, like, we have the author role being set statically, like, on startup um, Yeah. or for a tenant by doing a put on the settings endpoint um, to update it. Mm hmm Um, I, I was curious if anybody had any thoughts or, or any background as to why that was that approach was taken as opposed to, like, associating... it with like our public did and have each did be either an author or an endorser and then basing like our behavior based on on a on a per did basis i guess I Um, talked to Ian about that before and there was like a historical reason and apparently some people worked on it for a bit that that uh, just worked for like a bit on the project and stuff and there was a few yeah. decisions that didn't make a lot of sense at the time. It's it's something similar to what you described about the copy paste. I think Mm, they were. yeah. It, it, if I remember correctly, when we did the endorsement, it took a while to get it done because we were winding into I don't know why edge cases and and handling and and that they wanted to kind of basically have it explicitly set because it made more sense when they were writing the code. I agree that it's something that you could either either apply elsewhere or even just infer based on. whether you're talking to an endorser or not. So you don't need to set the role on both ends to know what your role is, right? Right. Yeah, I think, yeah, the history of this code is not good. The, We I, let a we let a uh, what I imagine is a junior developer run with it too long, and then mm -hmm. Ian tried to clean it up a bit. But yeah. I, I like the idea of a cleanup. Uh, of course, I'm wondering for the what, what your idea for moving forward with the auth rules check, Daniel, would be. Uh, were you thinking of like building into Akapai a function to basically see what can I do, so so to speak, uh, against the ledger I'm I'm working with, and 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 use that as a as a control for these and potentially other stuff, or or did you have any other ideas? Um, I, yeah, I think that generally covers the, the basic idea. I haven't put a ton of thought into this. Um, but yeah, um, just using the, the auth rules to, um, determine when endorsement is required, um, as opposed to doing it all the time, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I, I mean, my, <clears throat> my two cents would be to go as simple as you can. <clears throat> Yeah. as I say, so I threw out two ideas of trying to make it simpler. Um, and then the other thing is, um, <clears throat> I don't know how this, I think there has been a proposal that the concept of endorser carry on through into other did methods like TDW and, or did web. And that would lead to, you know, how you, how we can make it more generic. I don't know if you want to take on that much, but th those would be the things that I would be thinking about in doing this. Um, but I leave it to you, your judgment, just to know those things are out there and then make decisions. You're going to make way better ones than I would. Yeah, I suspect what will happen is I'll have to solve my immediate need um, Yeah, and then exactly. kind of come back and, and iterate Yeah. on it a little bit. But Yeah. yeah, for sure. Um, hopefully the fact that I've got that immediate driving need will require me to uh, keep it simple um, and, and not try to, you know, rewrite all of the indie ledger code overnight or something like that. So, Yeah. 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 I, I mean, seriously, I would be tempted to just say, oh, just get everything endorsed and be done with it. And then maybe find a shortcut <laughs> to bypass endorsements right before you call the endorser <laughs> or, or something like that. Anyway, because Yeah. I mean, rights are relatively rare, so it's probably not a significant overhead. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay.
Awesome. Um, any other things we want to talk about um, as we go? We've got our transition plan. I've updated that a couple of times in the last week to get that going, but I think we're ready. Um, anything else anyone wants to talk about? Yeah, one thing that came up yesterday when I was doing that, that cleanup of the tail server, I'm wondering if we should... Oh, right at least log something uh, yes for daniel the background is we the test tail server that is used for like all the integration tests as well as other stuff that we have hosted uh, that is non-production uses a lot of disk space because we're creating like a high number of tails files for integration testing and whatnot and we have to periodically either expand the storage or go in and delete manually stuff so I was wondering if we should just like log and, and see if we can follow through with them. having the integration test at least run on an ephemeral instance of the tail server that we use for that and then gets destroyed so we don't have to store all of that data or clean it up afterwards. I mean, one thing for sure we could do now, Emiliano, is create a cron job on that instance and delete things, right? Based on the two patterns you found. So at least it, we wouldn't be yeah increasing I mean, the size significantly we, we we can we can keep an eye on it it's it's just kind of like patching it though right like uh, ideally if yeah. you can run in a self-contained environment the ledger yeah. is harder of course but if we can run a self-contained environment for that would be my preference i just don't know how what how much effort that is because i haven't looked into it and what the thinking yeah. is on the team so this is an Akpai's integration test. You're saying we're we're using a, a hosted tail server as opposed to one that's spun up locally within like the action that's, runner. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You're right. That that should be. We should do that. The ephemeral yeah. ones purely for the integration tests. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. I, I think. I, the... Go ahead, Dane. Sorry, I was just gonna say I would agree. Um, just spinning up a Tails instance. That's what happens in like the scenario testing that um that got adopted from the Occupy Minimal yeah. example repo is we just spun up a Tails instance within the Docker Compose. Um and the pattern is obviously a little bit different for the BDD integration tests, but I, I think um just spinning up a quick container with with the tail server in, in that context. Um might not be as as neat and tidy as a Docker Compose, but I think it should be doable. Yeah. We talked about that before, and there's some reason why it used to be that way, and then we switched to having it this way. And I think partially was the timing, and you know, it's gonna take a little longer to stand up the the local tail server uh, than just calling one that is hosted. I think if we if we are smart about it and we just you know stand it up at the beginning of the test and tear it down at the end, we might reduce that to a minimum and and get away from it. Maybe we should just like I can log a, a ticket and and we can take it up as needed as an Im improvement. And in the meantime, we just keep an eye on the the hosted version. The one other thing, Emiliano, that I was surprised at is you. You weren't able in the data we have visible to know the source of um no. tails files. And, no. yeah. and it might be nice to have some mechanism <laughs> that would tell us where they came from. So that yeah. if we do have to clean up, we can. So that's the one other thing that we should we might want to think about. Yeah, I think that that could be like a separate project, kind of like improving improving and updating the tail server to be Better. Yeah, uh, yeah. Right now, it's just literally a file system storage. It only checks that like what you're passing is is valid. Yeah, and for some reason, I thought in doing that there was some some information recorded somehow, and I didn't never thought of how. But I was amazed when you said, "Oh yeah." For some reason, I would thought, for example, there would be an identifier associated with the uh, with it, and and we could use that. But anyway, yeah, the, 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 the so. tail files all get stored. The, the, the best information we get is like, I don't know why not all tail files, but most tail files have like the cred def tag as part of the of the name. Yeah. But you know, if two two different entities create a, a credential definition with the same tag, you know, the, you're not gonna be able to distinguish who is who. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, we're at time. So we'll leave it there. And as I say, we'll be in touch on Discord on the transition to OWF in the next day. It'll get done. Cool. All right. All right. Take care, all. Thanks. Have a good Bye. day. Bye. See ya. See ya.